limited in the old Paris. This is what they British euphemistically call a cesspool. This is a common toilet in the courtyard of a Paris building uh, that probably served 50 families. It's a place you wouldn't want to hang out. Um, right? Right? That can speak for itself. So, he had to deal with water not only coming in, but going out. And that meant improving the sewers. Now, if you know Victor Hugo's famous novel, Les Miserables, you know, that famous scene in the Paris sewers, right? This ain't Victor Hugo's sewers. His genius was that, at the, Osman's genius was that at the same time that he was building the streets, he was building the sewers under them. So he didn't have to do the work twice, okay? Um, when he took over, there were 66 miles of sewers in Paris. <coughs> By the time he left office, there were almost 600 miles of sewers in Paris, and almost 500 large tunnels where workers uh, could do maintenance work. Uh, the way it was fascinating, the way in which they got the sludge, I'm using a euphemism, to, to move through the sewers was they had little boats that floated in these channels that had metal plates that came down. They would anchor the boat, lower the plate, the water would back up behind the boat, and before the guys in the boat got flooded with things you don't want to think about, they'd raise the plate, and the water would go gushing past the boat and flush out the sewer. Now, here's another uh, tight butt, and I want you just to notice one thing. Notice the pitch of the street. You remember the water in the first slide that was just sitting there? He had the streets engineered, Osman did, so that there's a crown. All modern streets have that too, right? It's higher in the middle and at the edge. What happens to the rain that you see fall? It goes to the side of the street. As they were building the street, they put in sewer grates, and the water falls into the sewers, the way it goes. Um, and so here's one of the catch bases, okay, on the Great North South Axis that gets that rain. Uh, the only problem was that the water going out exited Paris three kilometers downstream, a town called Inyeo. So if you live below that point, you didn't want to drink the water. From the, it went back into the sand. Okay. People actually toured the sewers, and those of you who are going to Paris with Simpson, the entrance point is the Pont de l'Allemagne. Okay, you can take a sewer, they're very nice sewers. Uh, you'll learn a lot of stuff. <laughs> But you can see early on that people were interested in this phenomenon. This was the one thing that Ausman did that was never contested. Everybody thought this was a great idea. It was. Now, I, I, I like this illustration too. It's kind of a, a Gulliver. Here's Madame Paris being invaded by Ausman's workers. These projects, which ultimately cost two and a half billion francs, and the debt was not paid off until 1929, by the way, even though Hasselbein raised taxes and this and that. I want to make a small parenthesis here. We're now in a new administration that's given itself to renovating the crumbling infrastructure of America. There are people who say we can't afford it. I'll leave that question up to you. It's, it's, it's as much a political question as one of engineering. Uh, but I will tell you this. Okay, so it took them until 1929 to pay this off. But what did they get? We got a city that was livable. Okay, so there is a, a trade-off. Okay, it's created a lot of work. You can read the caption at the bottom and see that most of it was done uh, by skilled workers and a lot of guys with shovels and a lot of small enterprises. Uh, so that the work was contracted by developers who made a lot of money and then some contracted out to uh, to uh, smaller businesses. But because of speculation and because what was going up was more expensive than replaced what was being torn down, prices were rising. And one of the things that people are afraid of in contemporary America that you'll hear on every radio station or TV station is what about inflation? As we begin to bail out the economy, we print money, and there are many people who are worried that this is going to lead to inflation. That's exactly what happened here. 
cataclysm the people at the bottom of the economic spectrum will get hurt. I like this illustration simply because, well, that's how it's fun. But you see a lot of the work being done by hand. Most of Paris was dug out with shovels and picks. Uh, very few uh, heavy pieces of machinery. And I like this is another cut, but okay. Um, these guys are, are, are refurbishing a floor in one of the new apartments that's going up. Uh, so you see the wrought iron balcony. You see the um, the, the nice parquet uh, uh, work on the walls. Uh, now you also see the bottle of wine. Um, this whole business about having a healthy working class also stemmed from a 19th century fear of the working class. Because as it got more impoverished, it got more radical. And what was coming along at the same time of capitalism was socialism. And in order to keep the masses healthy and happy, they had to be provided with work because the powers that be wanted to keep them out of the hands of the socialists. Now let me give you a couple of statistics here. And to show you why the center of Paris was becoming a place for the wealthy. These working guys are skilled artisans, or they would fall into that category. They could expect to earn about two and a half francs a day. Um, if they had a family of four, a wife and two children, they could not survive on that. So the wife had to take in laundry. Uh, she had to work in a equivalent of a sweatshop. Probably the oldest child would quit school and go to work as soon as he could or she could. Uh, they could probably that way put together 1,500 francs a year. Um, a bourgeois family of four, a uh, middle class family, probably could put together 6,000 francs a year. So the same four people are living on 1,500 francs and uh, 6,000 francs. We have a nice ratio of one to four, 1,500, 6,000. Except in terms of rent, the way the revenues broke down and disposable income broke down, the bourgeois family could afford to pay 11 times more rent than the working family. In fact, I know the figure. It's 90 francs for the, per year for the working family and 1,000 francs a year for the bourgeois family, which should work out to 11 to one. So that the, the fact that just that much more money is coming in means that you can afford a better place to live. Housing is getting more modern. It's getting much more expensive. So that's what you move into. And it's forcing 300,000 working people into the east of Paris. And there's some statistics about it. I'm not going to bore you now, but you know exactly. Elsewhere kept great records. You know exactly what he built and what he tore down. There were more houses that were built because these are multiple dwelling or residences, so you have houses, and then you have dwellings within the houses, okay? The second number would be larger. There was actually a surplus. By this time, the population of Paris was about two million. He had a surplus of about 100,000 apartments. He couldn't rent them all because they were too expensive. Okay, I think we've covered this on the uh, but, the, but, but what he spent was 45 times the annual expenditure of the city budget. Right? Now, he had some very wily ways to finance this, but he couldn't finance it at all. Originally, there was a tax. Remember, remember I mentioned the tax wall? The tax wall had come down, but all uh, foodstuffs and wines coming into the city were taxed. Hausmann extended that tax to building materials so that any developer who wanted to put up a house.